For the millions who follow British royalty, 2022 will stand out in history for generations to come. The year Queen Elizabeth II celebrated 70 years on the throne, the Platinum Jubilee. I think I might just put a knife in I it. Think but it was also the year her extraordinary reign was to end. This was the last the world saw of her. On the 6th of September, appointing her 15th Prime Minister at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. She died two days later. Throughout her life, Her Majesty the Queen, my beloved mother, was an inspiration, an example to me and to all my family. And we owe her the most heartfelt debt any family could owe to their mother. What followed was a state funeral with pageantry and tradition. Millions reacted with respect and fondness. Most of the British people had never known any other monarch. The Queen's coronation was in June 1953 in Westminster Abbey. She was only 25 when she acceded to the throne more than a year before. 70 years after his mother was crowned here, King Charles will have his coronation in Westminster Abbey. It will be steeped in centuries-old tradition, but there'll be a difference in tone, an attempt to save money in difficult times for the economy of Britain. At 74, King Charles will obviously have a much shorter reign than his mother, but he will face major difficulties. Isolated incidents like this don't help, but the public standing of King Charles isn't his main problem. And while grumpiness may not be normal protocol, the reported feedback from this incident was mainly positive. Royal Watchers saying it shows even a king can have a temper tantrum. Serious issues abound, though, not least the role of Prince Andrew, who's stripped of royal duties and most of his titles. A woman in the US accused him of sexual assault when she was 17. He's made a financial settlement with her, but he denies any wrongdoing. To describe what happened with um, Prince Andrew's association with Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell as a scandal is in some way to understate how horrific that is. For the palace to have continued to give shelter and to give credibility is unbelievably damaging. There's a hierarchy of the family. You know, there's leaking, but there's also planting of stories. Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle present a potentially even more damaging issue. We are on the Freedom Flight. The six-part docuseries on Netflix set out the couple's grievances and why they decided to leave royal duties and move to the US. We can't disregard the impact of the Harry and Meghan split, but I think it's pretty clear that the monarchy will weather this as it has so many other storms. Not all royal watchers agree with that optimism, though. Other issues include a police inquiry into some of Prince Charles's charities over allegations that cash has been donated in return for royal honours. There is consternation about the monarchy's future, in particular its 14 overseas realms. I still don't think that we'll see a republic during his lifetime, but I think the prospect of a republic uh, has drawn closer and I think a lot of the overseas realms will depart during his reign. There's a big majority in favour of the monarchy in the UK, but critics say King Charles needs to make the royal family more relevant to British life and to crack down on scandals and excessive spending. Andrew Simmons, Al Jazeera, London.